So did you know that 20% of all acute ankle sprains can unfortunately develop into chronic ankle instability? This is super important. We need to be able to recognize this and make sure we rehab it in the right ways. That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So when we're talking about chronic ankle instability, we're most commonly talking about recurrent injuries to the lateral ankle ligaments. Let's take a quick refresh of that with our 3D anatomy model. So here on our anatomy model, let's dive in to the ligaments of the lateral ankle. And there are three key ligaments that make up this lateral ankle ligament complex. All of them attach from various bones to the lateral malleolus of the fibula, which is the clear bony prominence that you can feel on the lateral or outside of your ankle. So what are these three key ligaments? The first is the calcaneofibular ligament, which joins from the calcaneus bone to that lateral malleolus. We then have the posterior talofibular ligament, which is located at the posterior aspect of the ankle, running from the talus to the lateral malleolus. And finally, we have the most commonly injured of the three, the anterior talofibular ligament, which runs from the anterior talus to the lateral malleolus, as we mentioned. So how do these ligaments get injured? Well, the ATFL, as we said, is by far the most common one, and it typically presents with a trauma that results from a heavy inversion sprain particularly with plantar flexion. So we're looking at this inward twist of the angle with the toes facing down. This will commonly happen in sports like basketball, netball or football, where you have someone jumping and then landing awkwardly at the ankle. So look out for this. So that inversion plantar flexed position with that inversion sprain is how a lateral ligament injury may happen the first time. What about chronic ankle instability. Well, this is where we see that repeated trauma, those repeated inversion sprains that don't quite allow the ankle to regain the stability it needs for function. Commonly, we're talking about sports which involve those high levels of twisting and turning. So we're talking about basketball, netball, football, as we talked about a second ago. And hey, if you need an example of anyone who's had chronic ankle instability, look at NBA star Steph Curry. During the 2011 season, Steph had real recurrent ankle sprains. And unfortunately, at the end of the season, it had to result in surgery in order to restore the structure of his ankle ligaments. Now, the most common time that I see someone develop chronic ankle instability is when they've had those repeated sprains and they haven't quite had the rehab that they need to really build that proprioception and ability from those lateral ligaments. It may be that you're speaking to a client who says, yeah, I did a little bit of physio after it happened, but then I kind of just got on with it and I just went back to sport anyway. Or you're talking to patients who they've talked about their physio without really going through the really high level exercises, the jumping, the hopping, the landing, the really high focus single leg activity. So when I'm listening out for my patient's history, those are the things I'm taking into account the particular sport they play, the amount of sprains they've had, and the previous physio they've had. Did it really take into account the high level rehab needed to get back to the field of play? So objectively, sure, we might find that it's painful when we passively invert the foot and it creates this pain around the lateral ankle. But a sign that I'm really, really looking out for with these patients is the inability to evert from an inversion position. What do I mean by that? Well, if you think about these patients, they have repeated inversion sprains because when their foot moves into inversion, their body isn't good or quick enough to bring them back to the neutral. And therefore, when you put these patients in an inverted foot position and then ask them to evert, perhaps in a resisted manner against your pressure, you find that they have far less strength of eversion than when their foot is in a neutral position. So here they might be four and a half or five out of five on the Oxford scale. And here there are four minus. They're much, much weaker. And that tells me that they therefore haven't got the strength to bring their foot back to the middle in that split second when they have their inversion injury. So as a result, 
How do we rehab these patients? Well, in the early stages, it's all gonna be about gradual progression back to weight bearing. And we wanna try and do this as soon as possible after their injury. It might be therefore that we might provide the patient with crutches, but with the key intention that they will be putting weight through their foot. They won't be simply lifting their leg in the air and swinging through their crutches. We might also give them basic range of movement exercises, and I like to get them started on isometrics, particularly into plantar flexion and eversion in order to get that real strength going. So once that phase is done, that's when the real work starts. That's commonly when these patients would have jumped away from physio in the past because things would have just got better. So as a result, this is when I'm really working with these patients for a good two months to make sure that they have really good high level single leg proprioception. So they're doing lots of single leg exercises. They might be throwing a ball off the wall. They might be doing TheraBand work. They might be doing single leg activity of all your favorite exercises like your squats or your deadlifts, for example. And then when we're at the latter stages of rehab, perhaps around that two month point, that's when we really look at jumping and landing and changing direction. This is where plyometric exercises really come into their own. So we can look at things like single leg hopping or a step and land exercise to start with. And then eventually I'm gonna be really taking these patients through their paces in terms of lateral hopping, perhaps with something like a triple leg hop test and in particular, a triple leg crossover hop test where we're really challenging that dynamic stability. And then finally, return to sport criteria. So I might be looking at the ability of the patient to do 30 single leg heel raises on their injured ankle. Do they have the endurance to do that? Or we could use measures like a star excursion balance test, which really test their proprioception. And we're looking for 95% scores on this test compared to the uninjured leg to see if the patient is really ready to get back to sport. And a final thought when returning these players to sport is bracing. And we can either do that via taping or you'll commonly see the NBA players these days who have an ankle brace on, perhaps on both legs, every time they play. Bracing has been shown to significantly add to stability of the ankle joint in that sporting environment. And there are some high level sports physios who will brace their players every time they go on the pitch to play sport if they have a history of chronic ankle instability. So certainly think about that if you've got patience yourself. So guys, that wraps up chronic ankle instability. If you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and check out all our best resources on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid, see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.